Oi, pessoal! Olá, olá! Bem-vindo a mais um episódio do Inglês de Necro Rádio. E eu tô aqui pra dar aquele meu recado diário, como vocês já bem sabem. Mas eu tô aqui pra relembrar, principalmente, que o sorteio do Cambly já começou. E vai até o dia 28 de outubro. Você que tá aí comendo mosca, tá deixando de participar de um sorteio super bacana, que vai dar dois planos pra duas pessoas diferentes. Um de adulto e um plano criança. Os dois planos têm um mês de 30 minutos por dia, dia cinco vezes por semana, ou seja, é muito, muito bom. É muito importante que vocês lembrem que é errando que se aprende e tem que deixar essa vergonha de lado, hein? Então, por isso que a gente está aqui sempre reforçando que você pode ir lá no Cambly.com ou no aplicativo do Cambly e colocar nosso código inglês de Necru Podcast e testar a plataforma, testar o professor, tem de todos os níveis possíveis, você pode filtrar de acordo com o que você queira falar. E usando o nosso código, você ganha uma aula de graça. Então é isso, tá? Para participar do sorteio, é só ir no link que a gente colocou aqui na show notes, colocar seu e-mail e pronto, já está concorrendo. Então é isso. Agora, on with the show. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Foster from English New Crew. Today we have a special guest, Seth Sachi, Seth Kugel, the journalist, traveler, YouTuber, author, among other things. Welcome, Seth. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Did you just say Inglês New and Crew with a carioca accent? Yeah, I can't. I can't shake it. Inglês New Crew. You know, I once had a... I, I, I learned Portuguese with a carioca accent from teachers, and then I had a girlfriend who forced me to stop. She's like, no way. <laughs> no way. You're American. There's no excuse for that. <laughs> It's interesting. My first Portuguese teacher was actually from Minas Gerais. So I started with kind of a neutral, caipira-ish accent. And then Alexia, my girlfriend, really changed me into a full-blown carioca saying like, yeah, yeah, yeah. beleza. <laughs> so Seth, you do a lot of things. You have the YouTube channel Amigo Gringo. You have a book coming out. Um, can you just give us a little background about who you are, what you do? Sure. Uh, well, I, I did a bunch of things, and then uh, I was a teacher, and blah, blah, blah. At age 28, I just started to become a writer, and it actually worked out quite well. I started writing for the New York Times, uh, and then later I became a travel writer for the New York Times, which is even better. But the best move I've made is to start a YouTube channel in Portuguese for Brazilians. Wow. Amigo Gringo, as you, as you mentioned. And that's been about three and a half years and like 400 videos and it's been the most fun thing i've ever done so that's kind of uh it's not it's certainly not the project that makes me the most money <laughs> but it is the one that's the most fun uh so i'm i guess you could say i'm a travel writer i have a youtube channel in portuguese i now also have a youtube channel in english with portuguese subtitles called globally curious that's to go along with my my book yeah which is coming at the end of october in english good practice for anyone who wants to read it uh called rediscovering travel a guide for the globally curious so uh yeah i'm pretty busy i'm pretty busy yeah yeah i just saw your new youtube channel and it's excellent i highly recommend it to everyone we just posted we just posted a video uh, about uh, an american family that moved to salvador To open a trampoline park <laughs> like one of the uh how do we call those in do we say trampoline park in english well i don't know that's what they call it it's like a you know kids like an indoor jump around fun house yeah it's like a yeah but it really is just like a whole bunch of trampolines that's that's all <laughs> it is and i mean there's not too many families that move to brazil and open a trampoline park but believe it or not there's two they actually copied their friends who did it Another American so, family that did it first? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in, I mean, Salve, I mean, in Sao Paulo and Rio, I think. That's awesome. Yeah, that proves you can do anything. Anything these days. <laughs> it really <laughs> does. It really does. Yeah. Yeah, Seth, I've been a fan of Amigo Gringo for a long time. And you guys produce a lot of videos. Like, yeah. how do you do that? So first, what is, what, what is the main goal of Amigo Gringo? Like, who are you producing these videos for? And how do you do it? The main, the main goal, the selfish goal, 
is to talk about all the things I talk about anyway <laughs> with my friends, both Americans who live in Brazil or, or love Brazil uh, and Brazilians who live in Brazil and maybe don't love Brazil uh, about the differences between the United States yeah. and Brazil. Did and uh, and it, it started out as kind of a tourist thing. So I'm, I'm a travel writer. It was sort of about like how Brazilians should experience New York and how to sort of blend in mm -hmm. with New Yorkers. Uh, so we both uh, talk about like everything from just like whether to bring gifts when you stay at people's houses, how to flirt with American men and women, uh, you know, safety issues, uh, punctuality, which is always a, a big and very complicated issue, by the way. It's not just like Brazilians are always late yeah. and New Yorkers are always on time. It, it's much more complex than that. Yeah, it's just a totally different vibe on totally different wavelengths. Yeah. And, and, and then we also added English pretty close to the beginning. We started adding English lessons on, in most videos. And people love those, so we have a whole series of, of videos just on English. There's a playlist, I think it's called like Aprendendo Inglês com Amigo Gringo or something like that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and and so and also Brazilians stopped visiting New York so much because of the the you know the weak currency, the real. Yeah, yeah. Being weak. So um, so we also started doing some more stuff in Brazil. We have videos from you know at least eight or nine different uh, cities in Brazil. Uh, and the way I did a lot of videos is I had a great team for the first two or three years. Uh, and then they kind of moved away. Every single one of them moved away. actually. <laughs> to another place. Uh, and so now I, so I, so I do it mostly myself now. I just got a new guy, Chago helping me. He's from Rio. Nice. Um, so for the last year or two, it's been very much work to try to figure out how to do these on my own. But, uh, yeah, but it, there's a lot of stuff on there. I think you could probably watch for like, 40 hours now or 50 hours if you wanted to. Yeah, there's a um, lot of material. And I don't think most people recognize how much work goes into producing like even a relatively short video. It's a lot of work. Yeah, it's a lot of work. I mean, it, it's, it's also it's funny, like there are some people, I guess, who can just get on and talk and think that's a video. But for me, <laughs> uh, for me it all needs to be planned out. Um, not the exact words. So, uh, Seth, you're kind of a part of this boom or explosion of YouTubers kind of catering specifically towards Brazilians. Part of the boom or the pioneer? I would. I think that's the question. I would, let me rephrase the question. You have spearheaded a new movement <laughs> of, <laughs> of this boom of people just kind of teaching Brazilians random things, sometimes about culture, sometimes about language. Why do you yeah. think this has happened? Um, like, I know Brazilians are super digitally savvy, but yeah. they love watching Americans speak Portuguese on YouTube. Well, I, I think there's a number of reasons. For, for You know, it is true that if you're... Most Brazilians have never heard a foreigner speak Portuguese. Yeah. You know, it's not like being, it's not like being Mexican. And, you know, just pretty much every American can at least count to 10 in, in Spanish. And, or, or if you're French, there's just the awful tourists trying to say things mm -hmm. in French when they visit Paris. But it's just very few people learn Portuguese. And uh, not it's not what the Brazilians mostly think. It's not because it's just like this absolutely impossible language to learn. It's really not that hard. Everyone says... Portuguese is the most difficult language in the world. I'm like, yeah, it was pretty easy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I understand if you tell me it's harder to pronounce than Spanish. It definitely is. Yeah. But it's it's not harder to learn than Mandarin, you know. No. It's just it's just not possible. Uh but but anyway, so it's fun for uh, Brazilians to hear Americans speak. I mean, we grew up in the United States where we hear everyone speaking English in all kinds of accents, and it's fun, right? Yeah. We we imitate Italians in like a, a caricaturish way. We you know we imitate the French. It's just part of our lives, and Brazilians don't really have that. So, to hear foreigners speak Portuguese is really fun. I think it's easier for you or for me to forget that because our friends in Brazil are maybe the kinds of people that do meet foreigners. 
but most people don't. And it's still every time I get into a taxi or Uber or bus or, or whatever, people always want to hear about how I learned Portuguese. And, and, and it's not just that. Brazilians are also very interested, for better or for worse, about what other countries think of them. Yeah. You know, Lata. This is the famous yeah. complex of Lata. Uh So, you know, like I said, for better or for worse, it's not necessarily good, but it's good for us. <laughs> so, yeah, you are on point when you said that it's just fun for Brazilians. And I think I've forgotten that because I'm in the U.S. right now. I haven't been to Brazil in almost a year, maybe. But I forget. Yeah. Every time you get in a taxi, you order food. People are like, huh, where are you from? Oh, the U.S. What are you doing speaking Portuguese? Like, what are you doing here? And it's just how did that ever happen? Yeah, it's just befuddling uh, to them. By the way, I, I think you, you should, if you don't already use my my comeback when someone says, "Wow, we'll say fala muito bem," I always say, "Ah, we'll say também," <laughs> and they're always like a little befuddled, like, "What?" But I, but I do speak, but I'm from here. <laughs> Pretty good move. I mean, it's I do it so often that when I'm with somebody I know, they can't stand it. I normally just use the self-deprecating, like, no, cara, meu português chama merda, and just kind yeah. of fishing for compliments a little bit. <laughs> that's good, that's good. But, um, oh, I was going to say also that, uh, you know, Brazil is also a huge market. You know, if people are trying to make, you know, at least not lose money on YouTube, you know, you can talk about Brazil and you're reaching, you know, I think it's YouTube's second biggest market. Yeah. And you can do stuff in Spanish if you want, but you're going to have to do it in very general terms because uh, if you do it just for Mexico or just for Argentina, uh, you know, that's not so so great. And, and also, um, um, it's fun. People love Brazil. You know, Americans tend to love Brazil. You know, it's, it's a hard place to live. But Americans who sort of just visit or spend a month there or something tend to really love it. And, and so it's I, I should add one more thing. The Brazilians are really fun to interact with on, on YouTube. I get comments every video from all over Brazil, all over. And they're often hilarious. Sometimes they're very smart comments. There's criticisms quite a bit. Um, mm -hmm. Weirdly, I don't really get the haters really anymore, the, the um, trolls. I, I think that I tro drove them away at the beginning by <laughs> actually answering all the comments. You know, when, when they see you're answering, they don't. So, so I have a really nice audience. Like, I have a really nice community out there. That's awesome. Uh, and, and I get to hear from people. Like, if I mention, I love to mention sort of faraway places that don't get many tourists. So if I mention Hondonia or Horaima, Oh, or even a specific town in Hondonia, there's always somebody that writes in and is like, I live there. <laughs> That's where I am. So I have a, a wide ranging audience, you know. I also have a po politically wide ranging audience. There's, um, you know, the Bolsonaro folks show up whenever I mention anything sounding like a New York liberal. Yep. Um, or anything vaguely uh, negative about President Trump. Yep. And uh, they come right in, and they're they're there, and uh, and not and they're all over the political spectrum, really. So that's really fun as well. Um, I have a, I think I have a, a broader communications with with a broader range of Brazilians than than most foreigners do. Yeah, and I think that's kind of an intrinsic thing of Brazil that it's a super diverse place and that manifests itself in a lot of different ways. I was a reporter in Brazil, you know, like a regular reporter, which was like eight years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, then you get to visit all kinds of places, right? You get to go to the interior and you get to go to, you know, favela and you get to go interview rich people and you go, you know, to the Amazon and you yep. go to the South. But, but that's very unusual. You know, most gringos who live in Brazil uh, live in Rio or Sao Paulo or, and they hang out with their friends and, who are of a certain, you know, social class. Mm -hmm. And um, so YouTube is really special in that way. I mean, there's a lot of things I don't like about YouTube. We could get into that. But of course. in terms of bringing people from all over the place into one community to debate or talk or interact, uh, it's really pretty great. And the questions people send in are, you know, amazingly varied. They can be very sophisticated questions. 
but they can also about sort of American culture and nationalism and gun control and, mm-hmm. and all sorts of stuff. And then they can be stuff like, do the, do the trees in Central Park really turn orange in the fall? <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> you know, that's a, that's a question probably from someone who, you know, has never really, you know, maybe, maybe they're younger and they've never traveled or, or whatever. And it's just amazing. Like trees don't turn orange in Brazil. And you, maybe you saw an image of it. You're like, that can't be real. They, they must paint. That's them. a weird Photoshop thing. Yeah, that's that's fascinating. Yeah, it, it makes you really think. It's it's the best. It's the best part of the whole thing. Aí, pessoal, muito obrigada por ter escutado mais um episódio do Inglês de Necro Rádio. A gente fica muito, muito feliz quando vocês estão aqui conosco. E você que quer continuar recebendo novidades e recebendo recursos grátis, vai lá no nosso site e você vai encontrar tudo isso. Além disso, você vai saber quando que Sound School vai abrir para se tornar nosso aluno do melhor curso de inglês online que existe nesse mundão. Então é isso. Muito obrigada de novo por fazer parte da família Inglês de Necro Rádio e te espero no próximo episódio. 